Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how digital radio works here in Australia anyway and show the differences between digital radio compared to uh, analog radio. So I'm just going to rip into it and show you by demonstrating some stuff on the computer because that'll be the easiest way to explain it. Right, now this is a spectral display of uh, the FM band. Uh, so it goes from 87.5 megahertz to 108 megahertz. And all these little spikes in here are individual radio stations. And the, the height of these spikes is the amplitude of the RF level. So this one up here would be the strongest station on here. And the spacing is about 400 kilohertz apart generally. All right, now here you can see I've zoomed in a little bit closer. And you can see the stations here. That one's centered at uh, 96.1 megahertz. And then 400 kilohertz up from that at 96.5 is the next station. And then the next one would be 96.9 and 97.3. So you can see how they're spaced apart. Okay, now I've zoomed right in on a station, and you can see down the bottom, just before it scrolls off, there was less energy on the sides and just the carrier in the middle. That means it would have probably just been talking or less wideband music. So you can tell just by looking at the spectral display down the bottom when there's talking or not, because um, when there's music, like this would be music here, it's very, it, the energy is spread out over most of the bandwidth because it's modulating that carrier frequency more. But anyway, that's an analog station, and the point is, there is a, there's a carrier in the middle based around that center frequency and a couple of sidebands, here and here, but it's all based around one frequency. So after all that, we know that an FM radio station takes about 200 kilohertz of bandwidth, uh, they're spaced 400 kilohertz apart, and the whole spectrum for FM radio is about 20 megahertz. So now compare that to digital. Okay, now I've got a digital radio transmission. There's actually more than one radio station in that, but I'll get to that later. So you can see it starts at uh, just below 202.2, and it goes up to 203. Let's say seven. It's roughly one and a half meg wide. So this whole uh, spectrum that it's using is well, 1,537 kilohertz. So one and a half meg. And what you probably notice is it just suddenly starts, and then it's pretty much flat. Really, you don't see any varying sort of pattern. You can't really tell that there's music playing or anything like that. It's just flat and then it drops off at the end and that's it. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in a little bit, put a little bit of averaging on here, and we'll start to see some things. I'm going a little bit further. Okay, what can we see? Well, you can see lots of little peaks here. And actually I'll find the center frequency. There's the center of it. There's the DC center point. So there's nothing there. Um, but you've got all these these little um, you know these little peaks here. I'll zoom in even more. Zoom right in. There they are. And you can see the spacing of these is roughly this is the frequency down here in megahertz, so each one after the decimal is a kilohertz, so it goes 202, 880, 881, 882. They're spaced one kilohertz apart, all these little um, peaks here. And they are actually individual uh, carriers, so we call them subcarriers. And there's 1,537 of them because they're all one kilohertz apart, and that gives the whole one and a half meg bandwidth. So compared to analog, where it's just one center carrier that modulates with FM, uh, digital radio uses this, and these are modulated with uh, QPSK, which I'll I'll get to in a minute. It's a digital modulation method which carries two bits per symbol. Okay. Um, so using four different phases, as it changes phase, uh, it represents two bits. So that's them. And then put all together, it's just a whole bunch of them um, spaced so they're orthogonal. So that's orthogonal frequency division multiplexing all together. So that's why that's flat when you look at it um, zoomed out. So given that each symbol change on this represents two bits of information, I, um, I looked up, the, the symbol duration is 1.246 milliseconds. So that's how long it stays on each symbol before it goes to the next. So that's about 800 symbols a second. And given that there's two bits per symbol change, that works out to be 1600 bits a second per each one of these uh, subcarriers here. And given that there's 1,500 of them, or 1,537 of them, it adds up to two megabits a second of digital bandwidth. So basically what we've got here isn't an analog transmission like before dependent on the actual audio changing, um, modulating the carrier. It's lots of little carriers, each carrying a, some, some data stream, together works out to be two megabits a second. 
So that, that data stream can be used for anything, really. It's just that for the purpose of this, it's digital radio, so there's you know, radio stations there. there. It makes it easy to put data over there too, like pictures and messages and stuff like that. So essentially, that's the, the basis for a data stream. So they're putting audio onto that data stream so we can get it, right? So let's have a look at that. Now to receive this, I'm using just your, you've probably seen them, the RTL SDR dongles, but there's a few options to choose from and they're not all the same. This, uh, the blue Newelec one is pretty common and that works pretty okay for an all-rounder. There's a black one that's sort of like a clone of it. It's shaped the same, stylized the same, but it's pretty shit. And then there's the metallic one from rtlsdr.com. That's by far the best performing, and that's the one I'm using here. So I've just got a program, um, digital radio program, this Welly IO. And um, yeah, so just. Now remember I said we've got two megabits a second to play with from that digital data stream that comes in. That's, um, that's one ensemble, okay? That, that collection of uh, stations in that transmission is an ensemble. We actually have three ensembles here. So um, I should probably mention what bandwidth they're using. Now, once upon a time we had analog TV and one of the stations was channel nine. And of course we got channel 10 and others. But when they brought in digital TV, for a while there, analog and digital were being broadcast simultaneously. So channel nine had its analog uh, spectrum, uh, you know, it, where it transmitted was here. And when they brought digital in, they couldn't put that there because it was already still transmitting analog. So they put it next to it as digital. So they had analog and digital running at the same time. And when they finally turned off analog TV, that freed up the space where channel nine used to be. So what they've done now is these digital transmissions are taking place there. Now for TV, the bandwidth is seven megahertz RF bandwidth. So that, by freeing up that channel nine, the old analog channel nine, we've got seven megahertz of bandwidth to play with. But each ensemble only takes one and a half meg. So they've put three in there. They could probably fit four, but they've put three in there. And I just showed one a minute ago, but you know, there's three of them. So when you go down here, you got all these lists. So if I pick a channel on 9A, I can pick Coles Radio. Um, there's just one of them, one of the many that are on channel 9A. Now, in case you're not from around here, Coles is a supermarket chain, okay? So they have radio playing and Coles Radio is also available on digital radio. It's not that bad, actually. It's pretty uh, various uh, stuff they play. So anyway, um, here it is, though, and that... Coles radio there, 48K, 32K bits a second. If I go to Coles CBD, which is another one, this is bad because it's 16 kilobits a second. If you listen to quality, they're killing Hootie there. So that, that's mono and it's 16K. Now mono would make sense for a supermarket, I suppose, because it doesn't really need to be stereo, but 16 kilobits a second, it's a bit of a shame. Um, other ones like the standard stations out there, like, um, I don't know, Where's one that I know of? 97.3, that's one. That's one uh, named after the um, analog frequency, 97.3 megahertz. They've just carried the same name. So technically, it should be 97.3. Instead of FM, it should be OFDM because that's the modulation we're using. But anyway, they still call it FM. And you see they've given that 64 kilobits a second. So they can vary how much uh, bandwidth, digital bandwidth they want to allocate to the individual radio stations. Um, one thing I do find a little bit odd, I noticed, is this is a talk radio station from AM. And for some reason, they've given it 80 kilobits a second. That's why we've got you on. When all, all they're doing is talking, which is a bit bad. In my mind, that should have the low uh, bandwidth and give the high bandwidth to the music. But, you know, I don't make these decisions. So anyway, that's that. Now, down the bottom here, we've got this thing called the constellation diagram but you may not be familiar with that one. Now I'll show you a constellation diagram, but I'll use a different program to show you a, a more typical one that you might have seen before. So here we are, I'm just on channel 9A again. Oh, and again. Okay, I just restarted that. So there's all the, st all the um, radio services on that, that ensemble. So I'll just go to old CB CBD and I will show, where is it? Spectrum and Constellation. So on the left we've got the Spectrum like we had before, and on the right we've got the Constellation Diagram. Now these are the four um, different phases. So you've got 45 degrees, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, and then back to the 45 degrees again. 
Oh, it's even got some help for you there. Um, so anyway, in a perfect world, they'll be nicely in their little quadrant there. So the receiver can, if, if it has a, um, a symbol in that area, it'll go, okay, this will be this quadrant here, okay? It only has to decipher which one of those four it's in to be able to reproduce it. Now, this is, as I said, this is done on the, the silver RTL SDR dongle that I've got here. Compared to the ones of these other ones here, those dots get more spread out and that it just shows that they're not as good receivers as, as the silver one. So that's what you might have seen before if you've seen um, QPSK stuff. But what I'll do is I'll go back to, yes, I'm sure, fuck you. Yeah. I'll go back to this one here and you see the constellation diagram down here. It's presented a bit differently, but I actually like this. So down here, you've got those four angles, 45, 135, minus 45, minus 135, and over here, you see that it's, it even tells you the subcarrier. All those frequencies that we saw before within the bandwidth, that one and a half meg bandwidth, you know, you got from 768 below to 768 above. Um, each one of these is one of the subcarriers and it shows you how close they are to the angle. So you can see that these are nice smooth lines. Now these other dongles here aren't really good. They, they go all over the place and make a mess, but as I said, the silver RTL SDR one that I'm using is, uh, is much better by far. So that's what I use and that's what that represents. So going back to this other program, if I just pick one of the radio stations, Smooth FM. Well, that's smooth, right? What you can actually do with this is go to the details. You can see what's on here. Now, there's an image that came in. Okay, remember, it's just a data stream, so I can send images. The coding rate and the protection level. Now that's the extra bits that are added to that bit stream for some error correction. Okay, so because it's a, a simple transmitter, there's no feedback to say you got packets or not. It's not like networking where there's TCP and UDP. It's just one, one direction only. Okay, so if there's any errors encountered along the way, we can't just ask for, for retransmissions. You wouldn't do that anyway. Uh, so it, it transmits extra bits along with that. And depending on what sort of protection level they've used as to how much overhead that takes. But the bottom line there is there are extra bits for error correction. So what I can do is a frame dump. And I'll just save that. Save a couple of seconds worth of that just to let it um, record what it's recording and stop that. Now if I open that up, you'll see the file there. It's an AAC file, so Advanced Audio Codec. That's just the audio um, encoding that they've used. If I do a bit of a media info on it, Here's what we can see. You can see the format they're using. You can see the, um, uh, yeah, well, sorry, that's the container format. And here's the actual audio encoding. Left and right, 48K. Now it doesn't say the bit rate, just says overall variable. But um, if we go back to the program, you can see it tells you here it's 48K. Now, as I said, there's three ensembles. I just showed one of them, but now I've zoomed out a bit on the spectrum and you can see the three of them here. They're all side by side, but they're all within that old um, analog channel nine, seven megahertz bandwidth. Um, it actually goes a little bit further than this, but they didn't put an extra one on there. That's the differences between um, analog and digital. And if you add up all the radio stations that you can put in this, I think it was like 63 stations all up, radio stations. Those 63 stations fit within an RF bandwidth of from what, let's say 102 to, oh, sorry, 202 to 207, about five megahertz of bandwidth. So that's five megahertz of RF bandwidth for 63 radio stations of better quality and data and all that compared to FM radio stations that use 20 megahertz bandwidth and there weren't that many stations. So you can definitely see why, why digital radio is gonna be where we are, where we go in the future. Um, at the moment, it's probably similar to the analog um, time when we had analog TV and digital TV uh, running simultaneously. At the moment, we've got analog radio and digital radio simultaneously. I can only assume they're going to turn analog off one of these days, um, probably no time soon, but I guess it's coming once they establish this. Digital radio isn't in every part of Australia yet. I looked that up. Um, it doesn't seem to be everywhere, but it will. I'm sure it will. And that's why. So that's um, a bit of an overview of digital radio. Now I'll put some links, links in for the programs that I used here, which are all on Linux, obviously. Don't ask me about Windows because I don't care. I'm also in the process of uh, setting up a website here with all this sort of info 
to get away from YouTube because I've really had enough of YouTube to be honest with you and it'll give me more freedom to do what I want here and get to the fine details and stuff like that so I'll put a link to that it's, it's tallpaultech.com anyway and um, yeah we'll see what the future holds but uh, it's definitely going to be digital so that'll do for now till next time do what you want see ya